simplest of terms, I would say smart growth is focusing development on existing, uh, in existing areas with existing infrastructure and existing transportation. Without the underlying development, we don't have the money to invest in schools. We don't have the money to invest in neighborhood parks. We don't have the money to expand parks. We don't have the money to continue to maintain our infrastructure. I just want to stop the group. We have people not only in the United States, but from around the world come to visit us to see how we did it, how we've applied the principles of smart growth in Arlington. The principles are applicable elsewhere. Arlington's been doing it long before we called it, uh, we called it smart growth. Forty years ago, uh, Arlington came up with a vision. That vision was to focus growth in about 11 percent of the county, two corridors, uh, to focus high-density mixed-use development within a quarter mile of, of uh, the two metro uh, systems to preserve the remaining 89 percent of the county between single-family garden apartments and uh, this, the open space that was out there, and then to um, define hard edges to the existing single-family areas, for the most part, that were on either side of the corridors, and then to provide transitions to those. We set a land use plan in place that said what the board's desired general uses and densities were. We set those lines. I've been here for 30 years and I can't think of many times, if any, that those lines have been blurred over the, those 30 years. So it's not to say that there aren't impacts and some tension on those edges. That is one of the issues we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But those edges have, have been maintained. And I think that's because we put the vision in place, we stuck to it, and we've had uh, consistent um, political will to hold those lines. Development always has issues associated with it. Um, I would say that focus on smart growth is actually a focus on trying to minimize or manage those issues. The tensions that we see in Arlington are not so much the result of smart growth as they are the result of growth at all. And I would say that most of the challenges we face would be worse if we hadn't focused development where we've developed it. We've been able to avoid being choked by traffic. Arlington is between uh, Fairfax County, which has 1.1 million people living in it, and one of the larger counties in the United States, uh, and the District of Columbia. So people are traveling through Arlington a lot, um, both by transit but also by automobiles. We are really part of the, uh, the region's urban core. We are at the uh, foot of three main bridges into the District of Columbia. Regional traffic, if you will, will continue to grow. Um, and where that goes will be a fundamental uh, issue for Arlington. I think Arlington has the, the planning in place to address that. We've also got programs in place to address that. We have neighborhood traffic calming programs, which I would say are, f are focused as much on, uh, on, on keeping the regional traffic out as they are the local traffic out. So I think the regional traffic is the issue for Arlington. It's not just about Metro. Um, we have really developed a, a transportation system, not a uh, commuter rail system. Uh, we have a lot of options that are available to people, and I think that's what, that's what really helps in terms of local transportation. Uh, it's walking, biking, car sharing, art bus, the Metro system. Uh, those, are, those are things that we've continued to do. Now we're looking at streetcars in Crystal City and on Columbia Pike. So I think the, the expansion of our transportation options has, is another place where we've evolved.
The, one of our goals of our early planning was to uh, emphasize transit over roads, and Arlington has fought for that for a long time, and we've been very successful. We have changed behaviors. People uh, don't bring cars with them or, you know, are willing to you know, have one car versus two. 19% of the people who live in the Roslyn, Boston, Carter owns no cars. 39% of those people who live in the Roslyn, Boston, Carter take transit to work. So that's a lot of people that aren't in cars, aren't congesting our streets. That's what amazes people, I think, to think that we have uh, these millions of square feet and, you know, 30,000 units of housing in the Roslyn Boston Corridor and traffic, in fact, has gone down over the years. The early focus on roads over people has changed, so now uh, I would argue that we have a higher level of focus on pedestrians and bicycles than we do on automo accommodating automobiles. So I think uh, we've seen some behavioral changes. The edges will always be an issue, both uh, from where are the edges and a constant concern about the edges creeping, but life at the edges can be a little messy too. Uh, and we, we try to manage that as well. But there's a lot of restaurants, uh, a lot of live entertainment, a lot of things that people want to partake in in our development corridors, yet the bleeding over of the impacts of that into the neighborhoods are an issue to be managed, and I think that is one of our challenges. There is no doubt that growth brings about construction-related issues, and that's something I hear about you know, pretty much all the time. That's temporary, but uh, there are issues with that. Um, affordable housing uh, is, uh, is a very big issue. I think it's the same with uh, affordable local retail. We have high density, fairly high expensive development corridors. We've got rings of uh, single-family neighborhoods ranging from very large expensive units to smaller expensive units. And then we have uh, a wide array of garden apartments that provide our affordable housing uh, and rental housing opportunities. Those are, I think, the, the future of our kind of challenges that we face, if you will, is how do we protect those? We are the only jurisdiction in the state of Virginia that has authority for a mandatory ex uh, inclusion of affordable housing into development projects. Everybody else, it's optional. Ours is mandatory. Open space, I think we didn't do a very good job on anticipating our open space and our active recreation needs. I think we haven't done in the past as good a job as we should have. Uh, and in anticipation of uh, what our recreation needs are. So that, that's something that I think was not in a success checkbox, if you will. The first planning effort on Columbia Pike was to look at the commercial corridors, and we carefully carved out the garden apartment communities. Now we're looking at the garden apartment communities with the coming of the, uh, of the light rail to say, okay, what do we want to have happen there? What is our vision for the future and how can we affect this? Um, we've got other areas in our, uh, we've got a community of garden apartments uh, with uh, moderate rental housing and a neighborhood commercial core in um, Westover, for example. So those, those continue to be uh, kind of, I think, the heart of Arlington and, and are a future planning issue for us. Roslyn is just starting to be uh, redeveloped as we speak. We are doing a plan for Crystal City's regeneration. So I think that it will continue to evolve. I think that the 40-year history of Arlington's smart growth uh, focus, has, if it's shown one thing, it's shown that we are consistent and that our elected officials don't make major changes uh, in our underlying philosophy, so I wouldn't anticipate that. I would think that we would continue along that path. 
Uh, one of the things um, that I'm kind of happiest about, if you will, is um, my kids and their kids and their friends as they graduate from college, Arlington's the place they want to be. I don't know, I, I didn't see that we'd be that successful in creating a place that people wanted to come to. Um, and I think that's one of the hallmarks of what Arlington has done.